What's going on everybody? It's your boy Shooky from Shook Earth Media and today we are back with The Walking Dead, Dead City. This is episode 5 called The Stories We Tell Ourselves. And I gotta say, I was really looking forward to this episode because in the previews, you know, we see the creepy sewers that we're going through with really cool looking zombies. It's really gross. There's a cool zombie scene at the end. But I gotta say, overall, this episode is kind of underwhelming. There's a lot of, like, big revelations. You know, now we know motivations of characters we didn't know before. And we know a little bit more backstory stuff with Pearly. But uh, in general... A lot of the stuff falls flat because there's a lot of narrative issues that crop up pretty much every scene I kind of have a problem with. So there's a, it's a good episode while you're watching it, but when you really think critically about some of the things going on, it's not adding up. I have some issues with this and uh, even the cool zombie scene at the end, like the zombie looks amazing. But if you've seen it in the trailer, you've seen it in the show. They didn't really do a lot with it. So there's, it's underwhelming from a lot of different points. And every part of the storyline, like I said, has issues, including the Croat. We got a new villain character, seems tacked on. It doesn't really feel like this story is going to resolve in any way that is satisfying. And we got the, the characters we were introduced to, to in this Manhattan landscape. We had a new crew that we were with. By the end of this episode, spoiler alert, they're all dead. So that's it for them kind of feels like a dead end and I'm not as excited about the season finale as I was hoping to be. So I got a lot of issues with this episode and it's kind of souring my opinion on the overall season but you know maybe it'll shake out at the end but uh, that's my overall feelings on the episode but with that let's break into the breakdown. Make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying these reviews. Hit me with a like and let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. And also let me know what you think of my new lighting setup. <laughs> I'm excited about it. But with that, we are just going to break into the breakdown. So we start this episode in the creepy tunnel. I'm like, this is awesome. I love the look of it. It's really cool. And they're actually addressing something I said earlier in the season where it's like, oh man, it would just be like really gross to be around dead bodies all the time. And I guess that's just zombie shows in general, right? So the smell of it would be overwhelming. And this is something they actually address in the episode. And uh, there's like, th this is the methane shoot we talked about before how, you know, turning zombies into methane, not really practical, but we're going to look past that for this episode. We've already talked about it, uh, but it, I, I like the addressing, you know, the, the scent in the air and having that be a plot point in the episode. That's cool. So there, there's some things that are crucially set up in this scene here. Uh, one thing is Maggie's looking through her bag for a flashlight and uh, Ginny spots the dinosaur. This is one of my issues is I thought she burned the dinosaur. Maybe I got to rewatch. I probably have to rewatch a lot of these episodes to see some of these issues that I have. But I thought she burned the dinosaur. She set up the, the, the garbage can. She put the dinosaur there. She lit the match and decided not to last second. I don't get that. And instead of hiding it or something, she just kept it on her. I don't, I don't get that. I'm confused. Already, so Ginny spots that, and it's like she she acts like it's something significant when she's already seen the dinosaur burning thing already. So I don't know why seeing the dinosaur in the bag is something she has to react to. It's weird. Next thing is we got Tommaso. Uh, he refuses to let his girlfriend Amina take the bag off of his shoulder to give Maggie the flashlight. So um, that's one thing. And I guess that's also supposed to set up that Ginny stole some things out of Maggie's bag. Again, this is like earlier in the season, we had the crazy hair lady. I forget her name right now, but the crazy hair lady that stole Maggie's bag. That was a plot point. It happened between episodes. So Maggie's really not good at keeping track of her stuff. <laughs> it's a recurring theme at this point. So Ginny stole the flashlight and she stole the flare gun i don't we didn't see this happen i don't know how it happened maybe if i go back and watch the last episode we'll see it hard to say but uh so yeah that that's a recurring theme but uh tomaso wouldn't take let her take the bag off my first instinct was oh he's bitten because in the previous episode we had him get dragged away by zombies in a weird looking way and then he comes back and usually when they do that in the show, that means that they got bit off screen. So I, th I just kind of assumed that they didn't do that. I'm actually glad that wasn't the case. It was something else. 
but uh, the, he was he essentially hiding something in his bag. We find that out later. We'll get to that part of the episode later. So uh, we're talking about methane poison, and we need to keep moving and all that. And you know, we're introducing Ginny. We're talking about what happened to Negan. Nobody knows, and that's the beginning of the episode. We see uh, zombies waking up. Um, and that's one thing that happens recurring in this episode is, you know, they're talking, they're making noise, they're shining flashlights around, and the zombies activate when the script deems it necessary, not when it would make sense according to how the lore has been set up thus far. So that's a recurring theme in this episode as well that's, um, I don't know, it's just a bit frustrating to me at this point in the franchise. So uh, now we're with uh, Pearly and Negan, and I gotta say unexpected to me this is the part of the episode i like the best you know because i honestly wasn't that into pearly as a character so far and um you know I, I love negan so that i guess i should have expected that but this is the part of the episode i thought um was going to be the lesser part it ends up being the part i like more strangely enough uh but the the fake out last week where uh, Pearly has him dead to rights. He's got a gun pointed at him. Not a gun, but the whatever you want to call that thing he's got. The nail gun thing. He's pointing that at him. And uh, that was the cliffhanger last week. It's such a fake, phony cliffhanger. It drives me nuts. Because according to this guy's philosophy, you know, he's the judge, jury, and executioner. He can just kill people on the spot. You know, he's done that before. We've seen him execute somebody We've seen him do that multiple times, I think. Um, so, I don't know. He needs to hold on to Negan. Maybe he need, wants to bring him back to New Babylon to make an example out of him. They don't explain. They hint that there's a bigger reason why he's after Negan. They don't explain what it is. I'm assuming we're going to get that next week. We better get it next week or it's going to be a plot hole. But uh, it just he's so desperate to bring Negan back, and we don't know why. But if it's just to bring Negan back to kill him there, to make an example of him... It's poor planning because this dude's limping, you know, he's injured, he is on his own, he's not going to be able to control Negan for long term, okay? So, he, it, according to his ideology of killing people, carrying out these executions, he should have just done it on the spot. So I thought we were going to pick up where we left off, Negan was going to talk him out of it. But really, they, this episode is supposed to make them, like, kind of friendly and working together. That's the point of this part of the storyline. We should have we should have just done away with that fake out standoff last week. It, it just it's just so phony. I I don't know. It drives me nuts. So uh, we're we're you know they're on the streets again. They got a no, a new location. Pearly sees a pamphlet of the docks, and he's like, "We're gonna go to the docks," which is cool. But then we find out he's a New Yorker, a native New Yorker later. So why did he need to see the pamphlet to know? Oh, we can go to the docks. You know, he says he worked for the government. Uh, on the water and stuff like that so why does he need a pamphlet to tell him where to go i don't know <laughs> it is cool that they're in this shop though i like negan looking at you know the statue of liberty thing calling back to the story he told about his dad that's all cool and then we get to this really massive pile of fat and it's really gross and all that and tomaso knows what it is right away but he still sticks his fingers in it to pretend he doesn't know i don't know why you would see something like that and then stick your fingers in it <laughs> Uh, at this point, Jenny's trying to run away. She doesn't trust Maggie. And, you know, Maggie explains that the, the things are fused shut. I, I get, you know, that she saw other ones fused shut before. And it makes sense if this is like a shoot to make methane that they would seal it off. But it's worth checking, though, right? You, you don't want to check to see if that's an escape. That would be easier than trying to find this long way around. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but one of the issues with this scene, and we're just going to highlight it here, uh, both both of these characters, Maggie and Ginny, they both have issues. Ginny, with the not talking thing, it's hard to relate to this character or really have a, a, any care in the world for who this person is. We don't know anything about her other than, you know, she likes Negan for some reason, and she's, you know, traumatized from her past there's not a lot to really latch on to, you know, they didn't give her a lot to do. She's just kind of like, I don't trust Maggie. And that's like all that she is in this episode. So it's kind of hard to relate to this character. And we should have had her talk at this point or some point soon. She kind of does communicate, you know, she spells out liar at the end. We'll get to that. 
But uh, that's just one issue with this episode. The other issue with this, uh, th basically the whole series is, you know, Negan's got a lot of good scenes in the show so far. Negan's by far the standout. We need Maggie to have a scene like that. We need to have a scene in this episode, this episode in particular. We needed her to do something really cool, really memorable, or like, fuck yeah, Maggie, that was awesome. Hell yeah, we love that. We didn't get it, uh, and um, it's a missed opportunity, and it just feels like the Negan show, and Maggie's also here. <laughs> uh, we, of course, we learn things about um, her motivations. We'll, we'll get back to that towards the end. But uh, one good thing I can say about this episode is we finally get outside. You know, we're out. We're not indoors the whole episode. There's some cool scenery. You know, a lot of the scenery has just kind of been establishing shots and stuff like that. Now we're actually out in the environment. Uh, it's only for a little bit, but it is cool. Uh, one thing it, here we're sharing the backstories. Pearlie's, you know, saying he worked for the government. And Negan says, I did too. Uh, I was a gym teacher. That's all cool. I like that. And I, I actually like the plan that they want to use the docks as a boat. That's pretty smart. It makes me think, like, why didn't the people living here think of that, you know? <laughs> but it, it, it's nice to have an end goal. He's got an idea. He knows what to do. That's cool. I'm down with that. Uh, but zombies show up on cue just because we need a threat right then. And, you know, the logistics, I'm thinking, like, this whole city seems so empty, but we're supposed to believe that there's so many zombies here that the government blew up all the bridges so uh and they kind of explain that by having a truck go around with speakers on it presumably it's the croats although i don't think we've had that confirmed yet but uh there's this truck that kind of hoards the zombies in circles and that's how oh they, they can explore outside because the zombies are being chased elsewhere that's not fully the case zombies just kind of show up when the plot needs them to show up which is, you know, how it always works. But usually there's some type of explanation here. Zombies show up kind of out of nowhere. And it's not like one single horde traveling together. They converge from multiple directions. And I guess, you know, they're talking. Oh, it, it's just a little convenient. But we go into this space here. And uh, there's like a refrigerator that's made into a door. Which is kind of cool. And I actually like this building, this interior here. We got these uh, weird looking art pieces with baby dolls. It's really creepy. And we got all these like weird tra traps and stuff. And they're wondering, you know, was it the person an artist before or did they go crazy after? Probably both <laughs> is most likely. Um, but, you know, that's one thing that I thought was pretty cool. Um, but here's a big part of the episode. So uh, now we're in this a really cool environment as well. This like little sewer thing is pretty cool. Um, but Tommaso kind of slips up here and he uh, reveals, we, we find out that he's the one who told the Croats people that uh, the, the group was coming to attack right then. So he's the mole. He's the one who told the, uh, who, who sold our guys out, who put everybody in danger and the way we find that out is Maggie figures it out, which, you know, that's something they give Maggie to do, which, I, you know, I like that she's observant. She realizes uh, something that uh, the other characters didn't. Uh, basically, Tommaso's like, pretends to find these oxygen tanks. And it turns out the reason why he wouldn't take the bag off is because the oxygen tanks were in there all along. He's pretending to find them. He's like, oh, it's lucky I found these. Turns out it was his plan all along. So... We're supposed to believe that this guy, his plan was to lead all of his people to their deaths. And the motivation is that he, he negotiated an escape for himself and his girlfriend. And he's kind of thinking that they're going to have a family down the line. Would have been stronger if they had a kid already. So that's one part. The other thing is he, does, he didn't have an escape plan at all. He just kind of went into this very dangerous situation the Croat blew up all the exits, the zombies come in and converge, but he didn't have a way for him to guarantee himself and Amina an escape route. And in fact, it's actually Maggie's idea to go down into the sewers. So it wasn't even his idea to go down there, despite the fact that he brought the oxygen tank specifically so that they could do that. And it just feels like a plot hole because he could have easily got bitten. You know, there were so many zombies. There's no guarantee of him getting out safely. His girlfriend as well. So that whole plan, I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. Uh, you know, I, I, I like having a twist here. 
and it's a bit of a surprise. I, I thought it was going to end up being the scavenger lady who brought the dinosaur, because I kind of I forgot to watch the episode again to see if, where what happened to her. I'm assuming she got eaten or something. But now that's that's the big revelation. It just feels a little hollow, like I, I, his plan didn't make any sense, you know? I get the motivation, but it, it just it just doesn't track for me. But I do like Maggie figuring it out. And then it's, you know, we're, we got some tension there. We got some drama. And, you know, he's trying to negotiate a way for him and his loved one to escape in the same way Maggie is going to sell out Negan. Uh, we'll get back to that later in the episode. But, you know, the similar themes are cool. I'm like, okay, we got interesting characters now. Something's going to happen with that, right? No, they, they die in the next scene. It just feels like re resolving the situation in the easiest way possible in the least interesting way possible in a very generic scene for as far as Walking Dead standards go. So I was like this whole thing about the sellout is just feels pointless. It's another dead end storyline. So um, I, I'm I'm not I'm at this point in the episode. I'm like, OK, that was cool. But now things are starting to fall apart. <laughs> It, like the drama was played really well. Um, so here's one thing that's cool is uh, we find the artist person and they had uh, committed suicide with this crazy contraption with an axe. They pulled the rope and the axe came down. That's my assumption. It's a, a really great visual and it ties back with uh, Pearly finding his brother dead. And we even see the flashbacks. We don't need to see the flashbacks, dude. Like, I, this drives me nuts. They did this with Maggie as well in this episode. They had Maggie, again, show the Glenn death thing. Like, we know. We know Glenn died. We know how he died. We don't need to keep seeing that. We don't need to see what we saw two episodes ago. Like, I know what he's thinking. Like, they, they think the audience is dumb <laughs> with these cutaways to things we've already seen that we are already thinking about. It's driving me nuts. It's every show does this now, and it's because they think the audience is dumb. Uh, it's probably the studio, to be fair. It's probably not the writer or director, but it, it still drives me nuts. Uh, and at this point, you know, a zombie walks by Negan. You kind of see the wheels turning, and he decides he's going to try to get away using that zombie, and that's exactly what he does. He throws the zombie at Pearly, and I'm assuming his thought process is, I don't want to kill Pearly, but I want to get away from him because he's a threat to me. So I'm going to put some distance in between himself and me, in between that, uh, the zombie he's got to deal with. You know, he knows Pearly's an experienced fighter. He knows Pearly's probably going to survive this. So he throws the zombie at him. Uh, and he also knows that Pearly's got an injury. So he's like, I can definitely get away here. But uh, so, so that kind of falls flat because, you know, Negan gets to this uh, doorway and it won't uh, come off in time. But Pearly, like, it feels really quick, way too quick that Pearly caught up. And uh, Pearly, instead of shooting Negan, shoots. It, it feels intentional to me. Maybe it was supposed to be like Pearly missed Negan. But it felt like Pearly, even though Negan just betrayed him, for some reason decided now they're on the same side. And he blew open the uh, the, the little boards here, the pallets. And, uh, you know, I, I like the callback to do not open dead inside. It's a little on the nose, but hey, I'm down with that. Uh, but yeah, so it just was like, he pot, he caught up really quickly and now they're deciding to work together, even though Negan just betrayed him. I don't know. It does it doesn't, it falls flat to me. Uh, they should have just had him working together from the start, in my opinion. Uh, and here we got, you know, we're, we're taking a break, even though that other room we were in ha was open to the air because we saw some coming in. So they should have taken a break back there, but now they're taking a break where there's all these dead bodies around and this is where everybody gets eaten. So the zombies don't wake up right away. They just wake up when, you know, they're at their quietest. They're not moving. They're, they're talking, but I don't know. It just drives me nuts, dude. It, it just feels like very contrived. Uh, so I, I did like the visuals of the hands coming through the dead bodies, you know, the ticking time bomb. You know, here's the flashback scene. We get to actually see Herschel get kidnapped. Not necessary to see at all. You know, we don't really get anything out of that until they do something with it at the end. Uh, but Tommaso's trying to explain himself and, you know, I can buy into it. It's just like, you didn't have, you had a terrible plan. Maggie, for some reason, keeps not taking the oxygen tank, even though she desperately needs it. And it's just frustrating at this point. Like, I get you don't trust the guy, but come on, <laughs> just take the fucking oxygen. And then even after they're dead, she doesn't take the oxygen. Like, it doesn't make any, like, 
why 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 i mean maybe it got busted and i just didn't notice but uh it's just a little bit frustrating so uh amina is talking like this girl doesn't even talk and the zombies like you know woken up by her somehow uh yeah let's take a break on top of dead bodies that's a great idea i i don't understand dude it's just a very contrived scene to me and it's just to kill off these two characters so we don't have like that could have been an interesting conflict like what is he going to do now now that his plan is revealed is he going to betray maggie what is maggie going to do is she going to kill him so that she doesn't have to worry about him is she going to try to save the other girl is she going to try to drive them apart there's so many things they could have done with that that are interesting and instead they just snuff them out and that's dead end storyline that's it so, um, yeah, I, I didn't like it. So I forgot to mention that in this scene, Tommaso also reveals that the Croat told him about the place with the bricks, uh, where Maggie and uh, the hilltop is now stationed with the school. And uh, Maggie from that is surprised and it kind of seems like uh, the Croat's plan is eventually to take over the bricks which, you know, makes sense to me. It just really seems like Maggie and the hilltop people should leave there by now. Uh, but yeah, that that's one of the key pieces of information in this scene. I didn't like it. That's that's all. I, and then we got the Croat pulling up to this theater group. He pulls up in the car and then he's screaming. And I'm instantly like, what is he screaming for? His plan worked and I guess his plan didn't actually work. And we find out why later. But uh, so this whole, this whole, we learn what the Croat's motivation here is in this scene. Now, he's, this is a group that isn't his own, and yet he pulls up without any of his bodyguards with him, and they're, they're even, like, hostile to him. It just feels like they're emasculating him in this scene, like everybody's deriding him, including the woman that he's there to see. It's just a weird scene. I, I like it at the beginning, though. Like, I like the idea of a, a Broadway uh, focus to a group. You know, like, Broadway's a big part of the, uh, Manhattan, you know, it's a big part of the mythology of Manhattan, you know, it's a big part of the culture there. So it's kind of cool to have people living there, they're playing piano, they're singing songs, and the, the woman here that's the leader, uh, speaks in the form of, like, theater and how stories work in theater, the different acts of the plays, such like that. Like, that was really cool. I love that part. Uh, but I, I don't like undercutting our villain here by, uh, you know, just making nobody respects him, you know, even though he's working, they're all on the same team, supposedly. So this woman here is like, I guess who he's working for. It's just a really weird scene here. And it turns out in this scene that the whole purpose of that trap was to get Negan, which feels like there were other better ways to get Negan. And, uh, you know, of course that means, you know, Maggie's whole trip to New York was all about getting Negan there because she's essentially going to trade Negan for her son and that's the whole purpose. Would it, they need Negan for something? Just his leadership skills? I don't know why they need him, but uh, it turns out the Croat last week really was trying to get on Negan's good side and convince him to come along. Um, you know, I, I th it would have made more sense as just simple revenge. But now they need him for something. I, I don't really get it. You know, they they both seem to have a lot of people on their side. So wh why do they need Negan as a leader if they already have people loyal to them? I don't understand it. So let me know your guys' theories down below. Unless maybe Negan has some sort of knowledge that they need to know something about. So that's why the Croat was upset is because he didn't get Negan. She derides him. She makes him kiss his her hand. She makes him like kneel. I didn't like it. It's weird. I, d I don't like that scene. I, maybe they'll explain it in a way that makes sense later. I didn't like it. Um, here, Maggie explains to Ginny what her purpose here is and why uh, she's like, you saw the... And I guess the reason they put the dinosaur in Maggie's bag was because Maggie doesn't know that Ginny saw the burning. So they have to keep the dinosaur there just in case. Like, just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Just so that she could see Ginny see the dinosaur, so she has to explain, and that it really contrived. It's like well, a lot of layers of not making sense. But uh, she explains that her, Negan is the key to getting Herschel back. She tries to get through to Ginny, you know, Negan's a monster, you know, and all that. Um, but she she lies in this scene. The crucial part is she lies about the Croat stealing grain, which uh, to me seems like an unnecessary thing to lie about. I don't even know, like, 
Maggie didn't even have any special knowledge about where Negan was. Like, she had to track him down. We don't even know how she tracked him down. But um, the Croat had as much information as Maggie did, uh, other than the fact that they both were in or, and around the Commonwealth at some point. They presumably separated, and Maggie knew nothing about where Negan was after that. So I don't know why he needed to kid... He found Maggie, knew about the past. I guess he heard about it from somebody. We heard heard from Croat last week that he knew about the war, so he knows something uh, from somebody they connected to in the past, just coincidentally, I guess. But what, he kidnaps Herschel to find Negan, even though it, her, Maggie is doesn't know anything special about where Negan is. So it, it's it's a lot of layers of like shit is not adding up. Uh, but she lies about the grain for some reason. I don't know why we have that element in here. Uh, then we end up in a school bus. Negan's helping out Pearly and putting a new bandage on. That's cool, you know. And using his knowledge is you know the fact that he was a, a, a school teacher. He knows that there's a first aid kit on the bus. Cool. Also, Pearly was a child in school. I went to school. I know there's a first aid kit up there because I went to school. <laughs> I rode on these buses. So did Pearly. Unless he walked to school, maybe. I don't know. It just, I don't know. That line of dialogue is just unnecessary. Like, Pearly was like, how did you know? It's like, dude, he, he could have just known that from going to school. Like, it's just, it's just dumb. Uh, but the, Pearlie's explaining the backstory of his brother, and it's a great monologue. I gotta give it some cred. Uh, you know, the acting is good. It's well written. You know, he's talking about how his brother was an addict, and uh, he, he basically robbed the family. He attacked his mother, and then they cast him out of the family, and then the apocalypse happens, and he's like, does he really deserve to be in the worst place on the planet at that time? And it's an interesting morality tale, again, bringing up the classic Walking Dead theme of it's not all black and white. You know, the, it, when the environment changes, when society changes, morality changes, you know, morality can only really catch up to where we are as a civilization. So, again, pl playing that back to it, and he even, like, mentions uh, kind of a, the, the uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce this word, but it's essentially a, a Catholic teaching about a tranquility of order, and it's tied in with uh, morally justifying uh, a war and the criteria that need to be uh, followed for a war to be justified. So it, it, there's some interesting themes here, but I'm just like, it just feels so random. You know, why is he telling Negan this? Um, I just get, I guess just to get it off his chest, but doesn't he have any friends or anything back home that he could have told this to? I don't know. It's a good scene, though, so I guess, you know, I'll give it props. It just feels a little bit random. And then here we get the scene I've been waiting for. This is the scene I wanted to see. Got this gross pile of zombies. We got the cool-looking fusion zombie. People were comparing it to the Rat King. I thought of uh, Evil Dead Rise. They kind of, at the end of that movie, spoiler alert, had, uh, you know, demons kind of merged together into one being. It was really cool. Uh, I've seen it in other movies before too, can't really remember right now. It's a really cool concept and I'm loving the visual of the zombie, like the bodies fused together just over time and the, the face uh, in, inside the zombie skin bursting out. There's a lot of really cool stuff here. It looks awesome. It is really cool. But pretty much all that we saw in the trailer is all that happens. You know, it, it pins Maggie down and snarls at her and then Maggie brains all the different heads and that's it. It felt like they did nothing with it. It's such a cool look, such an awesome scene, but literally like story-wise, it could have just been a regular zombie or a horde of a, a just six zombies regular and it would have been the same. You know, it's just to slow Maggie down so that Ginny can get away. And that's, that's all that it is. And I don't know. It just feels like a wasted opportunity. They didn't do anything with it. Really cool design. It just, it just kind of like fell flat for me. It was so quick of a scene as well. It's just underwhelming. And here for some reason, you know, Ginny, we get this flashback where like, okay, now Ginny wrote liar. She knows Maggie lied. The only thing Maggie lied about was the grain. And... Like, right before Ginny goes on the bike, she looks in the grain silo. Why? It makes no sense. Why the fuck does she look in here? And she looks in here like, what is this? It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. 
It's fucking grain, dude. Like, what? what is going on? <laughs> and just because there's still grain there doesn't even mean Maggie lied. Because the Croat could have taken half of that shit. Like, it could have been filled all the way to the top. The Croat takes half of it. That's still taking a lot of shit. Like, it's just really dumb. <laughs> and this is where, like, I, I, I'm. this show is losing me. And I, I want to be in love with the show, but this episode is kind of killing my vibe. And then uh, here we got the Croat uh, pulling out um, Negan's wanted poster, revealing Maggie was supposed to bring me Negan here. And maybe we'll find out, okay, you know, Maggie, maybe she was like, all right, either I'm going to betray Negan and give him over to the Croat, or we're going to defeat the Croat. We'll just see what happens. So that's what I'm assuming, because Maggie's not, like, outright evil. But I like setting up the whole betrayal thing. It's kind of like what my gut instinct on the show was like before I even saw a single episode was that it's going to build up to Maggie betraying Negan. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But uh, yeah, again, you know, like the stuff I already mentioned, uh, that's pretty much the end of the episode. Uh, you know, we get outside of the sewers. Ginny has the flare and then she shoots it off to tell Negan where she is. And Maggie's like, oh shit, Negan's going to find out I lied. And, and that's that's the episode. So let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm kind of sour in this episode. It's, I don't know. I wanted to really love this episode, but I have so many issues with it. And I forgot to even mention, like, the Croats plan in retrospect is, like, making no sense either. So he, get, he has that whole stadium set up very elaborate generator system he has all those chemicals going on and he's just willing to blow it up and let a horde of zombies overrun it just so he can try to get negan when instead they like knew they have this informant they could have had the informant just tell him where they are and then they get negan that way it's just like dude everything's dumb why is the croat abandoning this setup he's worked so hard to maintain just so he can get negan um and this show is losing me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to next week. Maybe uh, some Maggie versus Negan stuff will be interesting. But uh, let me know what you guys think. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. With that, it's been your boy Shuggy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace out.